In this video I'm going to show you how to work with recipes. It will not have any uh, information on uh, process optimization. It's only creating, modifying and verifying recipes. To do that I go to the recipe button, click it, and then I see that there is uh, two folders in the root. Under ICP1 and process module you'll find the whole collection of process recipes on the tool. In the other folder, uh, you'll find the batch recipes on the tool, and they are the ones that are to be used with the cassette loader. So currently, it's only the Pegasus one that has any batch recipes. That will be covered in a separate video. So I'll go to the process module and see the collection. In general, you'll have a change temp for uh, changes of the electrode uh, temperature. Um, a list of recipes in this folder and there'll be a Danchip folder in which all the Danchip employees have um, a separate folder, uh, some cleaning folders and a users folders in which all the users have uh, their own folder. Uh, typically we will prefer that um, the users are split into groups such as the BCP group uh, in here, the individual users will have their own folder. Okay, so I'll locate my recipe. Um, I'll start out with the aluminium edge recipe. So, this green um, icon uh, indicates that it's a recipe and it has a certain number of steps. The actual processing steps are the ones that have this uh, icon, uh, a graph of some sort. Um, so, in this particular edge, the aluminium edge, there's two uh, process steps. The other ones are um, standby default steps that you should not mess around with, it, uh, with uh, typically. Um, the pump to base step will ensure that the uh, hardware is working fine, that there's no interlocks. Uh, the clamp substrate uh, will clamp the substrate to the electrode, either electrostatically or mechanically, depending on the tool. Uh, leak up test will ensure that the helium backside cooling is running fine, that there's uh, not too much uh, helium leaking into the chamber. And then comes the breakthrough step. In each of these um, process steps, there is a number of tabs in which you can view or modify um, the process recipes. Under declamp, you will declamp the wafer uh, from the electrode and pump to base ensures that everything is fine. Okay, so first of all, in the breakthrough step, there is this general tab in which you indicate the process time. Uh, there is some um, settings for the generator and the platen up. You typically don't want to change those. The ramping is not used a lot because uh, it enables you to ramp parameters up and down during this individual step. It makes the process parameter space uh, quite complex, so it's not being used a lot. The stabilization is very important uh, because when you start a, a process step, uh, you put on the gas uh, and try to achieve the pressure that is indicated in the recipe. Once that has been uh, established, it will stabilize for some time before it puts the RF powers on. If the stabilization is zero, then the gases will come on, the pressure will try to stabilize, and the RF powers goes on at the same time, and that will cause uh, the process to fail because it cannot uh, achieve a stable plasma the, under those conditions. So you should always have a stabilization. Switching, uh, switching is for BOSH processes, but typically, under general, you only change the process time. Under pressure, 
you have the pressure setting you can either use automatic that means you have a setting I double click to see the uh, the ranges um, you can either do auto in which the APC valve will try to match a certain pressure in Militor or you can set the APC valve at some fixed angle. In this case with the aluminium edge the pressure is very low so in order to strike the plasma you will have to uh, use this strike pressure which is slightly higher for three seconds and then um, it will run uh, fine after that. Under gases you have the collection of gases down here. In this case you can see that the only one that is enabled is the chlorine with a certain flow. The other ones are not enabled. So it says false. Uh, you can also see that uh, some are red and that is uh, because there is an, an interlock when you have chlorine enabled, you won't be able to run hydrogen or methane. Um, that ensures that you cannot make uh, a gas combination that is explosive or something like that. <coughs> Under generators, you have the two, or in some cases three, uh, generators, in which you have enabled, you have a power, um, and you have uh, operating modes that uh, may differ from tool to tool. <coughs> that will be covered in a separate video. Under matching, you have the matching, the capacitor, the matching network. Uh, I won't go into detail with this, uh, that is for a separate video, as long as you use standard edge recipes and you don't change any process parameters you should not be concerned with this. Under temperatures um, there is a set of uh, different temperatures inside the process chamber that can be changed. The only temperature that should ever be changed is the platinum chiller. This one is running at 20 degrees. Uh, the other ones should always be left uh, don't change. Um, BGC, that is backside gas cooling. Um, you don't touch this one. EPD, endpoint detection. Uh, this is for automated uh, endpoint detection and we typically don't use that. Summary allows you to um, view a number of uh, process parameters to see uh, well, to visualize them. Okay, say I want to use this recipe uh, for a certain time. It hasn't been created yet. Um, it's pretty obvious that looking through all these uh, steps, what you care about is typically the process step. All the other ones are more or less invisible. So the bottom line is you don't create an edge recipe from scratch, you copy an, exi an existing one and then put it in your own folder and um, change it there. You don't create it from scratch because there's a lot of uh, sort of hidden parameters in it. The only way to create and modify recipes is to, there's no um, uh, save or close or save as. The only way to do it, or drag or drop for that matter, and the only way to do it is to go to copy and then locate your folder. In this case I'm gonna use uh, my folder in my group and then I'm gonna do paste. And then this name up here in is, uh, indicates the path to um, the folder. So if I call it ALH and press apply it will pop up in the correct folder uh, under my name with this path. If you look at the recipe on top 
you can see it has the same path. Um, <coughs> so in this way I have created my own uh, recipe and I can modify it if, for instance, I want to etch less time, two minutes. So in total this will etch for 20 plus two minutes, two minutes and 20 seconds. So that shows how you to work with recipes.